Hi, my name's Dave Bugney, and I'm the volunteer project manager for the Souter Creek Fish Habitat Restoration Project located near Estacada, Oregon. This fourth and final project phase, being conducted during the summer of 2020, completes a multi-phase project begun in 2014. I will briefly describe the activities taking place during this phase and a summary of past phases. Souter Creek, a second order stream, is a tributary of the North Fork of Eagle Creek and it has historically been a producer of coho salmon and winter steelhead. About half of this project, it was within institutional and public land defined within this white border here, which is owned and administered by the Clackamas Soil and Water Conservation District, the Bureau of Land Management, Portland General Electric, and Clackamas County's Eagle Fern Park. For scale, this white line here is about three quarters of a mile. This phase four, again, encompassed within this yellow line, entails placing 95 large Douglas fir logs and 22 log structures within the creek. 19 of these logs are larger than the rest and also have their root wads intact, which will help to enhance the stability of the large wood structures during high stream flows and provide additional cover for aquatic life. The project is inaccessible for conventional ground equipment. Log placements will be done using a Vertol helicopter, which has a payload capacity of about 15,000 pounds. The logs will be placed in the creek to mimic how nature did it for millennia, which fish and other forms of aquatic life utilize for cover, resting, and rearing. This large wood also creates deep pools and complex flow regimes, and it allows gravels to accumulate, which the fish need to spawn. Drone footage taken in February 2018 reveals why a helicopter must be used to place this large wood. Looking upstream with the drone positioned above Souter Creek's confluence with the North Fork Eagle Creek, the steep Souter Creek Canyon with about a 300-foot drop is inaccessible to all forms of ground-based equipment. The project will begin near Souter Creek's confluence with the North Fork Eagle Creek on Clackamas Soil and Water Conservation District property and extends upstream about a mile into my family's most downstream parcel. Historic logging practices remove trees adjacent to streams, preventing natural recruitment of logs as trees died due to age or disease or fell into the creek on account of wind or mass soil movements. It's also highly likely that any logs present in this creek were removed in some fashion during the 1950s and 60s by crews dispatched for such a purpose under the mistaken belief at the time that unobstructed creek is what was best for fish. Phase one of the work, completed in 2014, located about 0.7 miles upstream of this phase, entailed the construction of eight large woody debris structures using 50 logs donated by our family, the reactivation of two side channels, and the placement of 35 large boulders. In 2016, phase two of the project, or the most extensive phase, was undertaken and completed. This work, located just upstream of Phase 4, entailed the removal of two side-by-side, six-foot diameter steel culverts where Souter Creek flows beneath Clawson Road, which was a 53-year historic barrier to fish passage, and replaced them with a new precast, pre-stressed concrete bridge, allowing fish to access an additional five miles of the creek. The three large wood structures, 50 boulders, and 50 tons of spawning gravels were also placed upstream of the new bridge at locations spread over a distance of about a half a mile. In August of 2017, phase three of the overall project was completed. This work entailed the placement of eight large wood structures, including logs also donated by our family, 100 boulders and 50 tons of spawning gravels. This phase occurred about 1.2 miles upstream of the project phase, which is the current phase four. In 2016, we were fortunate to be enrolled in a separate but related program administered by the Clackamas River Basin Council titled Shade Our Streams. This excellent program, developed to remove noxious weeds and to keep our waters cool, is funded by Portland General Electric. In our case, it provided for the removal of very invasive reed canary grass, as shown in this photo, along about 2,000 feet of stream length. Total new plantings amounted to over 5,000, representing 25 species of shrubs and trees native to our area, as partially shown in this photo. In some areas, the new willows and cottonwoods have attained heights of almost 30 feet in four years. 
A point of clarification. Astute observers will spot limited areas of some naturally seeded foxglove. While invasive, this plant will die back as canopy cover increases. With phase four about to be completed, a total of over two miles of Souter Creek will be restored for fish, enhancing fish habitat for threatened and endangered coho salmon and winter steelhead, among other benefits. This upcoming winter, I will plant up to 1,000 shade tolerant native western hemlock and western red cedar seedlings along this segment of the creek within Clackamas Soil and Water Conservation District property to provide future large wood decades and centuries from now. Finally, I would like to recognize Portland General Electric for providing the funding for phases two, three, and four under the Clackamas River Hydroelectric Project Mitigation and Enhancement Fund. I would also like to thank the Oregon Departments of Forestry and Fish and Wildlife for technical and permitting assistance, as well as Biota Habitats, the general contractor, and Columbia Helicopter. Previous funding also included grants from the Oregon Wildlife Foundation Beulah Drake Grant and the Oregon Watershed Enhancement Board. Our neighbors, the McMichael and Thidey families, also allowed us to place logs within that segment of the creek that flows through their properties. The Clackamas Soil and Water Conservation District has allowed us to construct this log stockpile, staging, and helicopter landing area on their property. With that, let's let the project begin. Thank you. I will narrate some of this activity. This is the log and helicopter landing site where logs were stored and the helicopter was maintained. While I was down in the canyon, my wife videoed the activities in this area. helicopter is picking up two smaller logs for placement into the creek. Even while the helicopter is away, the landing is bustling with activity, including organizing the next series of logs for transport. The helicopter is bringing down two logs. Note the extreme wind speeds and pressures developed. It can be a dangerous area and one must always be observant. The logs are located by placing large blue and pink ribbons on the ground. Pink for the location of a root wad or where the water end of the log is to go and blue for where the opposite end is to go. Note how logs are wedged or pinned between adjacent bank side trees where practicable. The helicopter is typically only about 220 feet above the ground.
A large log with a root rod is being lifted for transport. Notice the adeptness of the pilot in rocking the log, which is wedged between others, in order to break it free. log with its attached root water being lowered into place. All work such as this is typically done during our seasonal low water flow period to minimize impacts to aquatic life and also make it safer for workers within the creek. Two teams were used to direct the helicopter pilot's placement of the logs. One team began downstream and worked up. The other began upstream and worked down. Other than myself and Dave Stewart of the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, team members were comprised of personnel from biohabitats and Columbia helicopters. Why do all this? Why expand all the intellectual and physical effort? Salmon and steelhead are a keystone species in an ecosystem. The keystone is that trapezoidally shaped top stone in an arch. If you remove it, the arch will collapse. From dippers to black bears to the surrounding forest, they all depend upon these fish. When you have a watershed like this, virtually undeveloped and unpolluted, with an intact forest canopy to keep water temperatures cold, the only limiting factor that prevents fish from thriving is a lack of high quality physical habitat. Give them a place to spawn and rear, and they'll take care of the rest. By focusing on these minimally disturbed watersheds provides the quickest chance to recovery of these fish and based upon my observations of previous restorations, result in the greatest benefit for the least cost. In summary, this is the final product. 22 log structures like this, with an average spacing of about 250 feet, along a stream length of about one mile. Each engineered log jam is a little different than the others in size and layout, designed for the space in which it's in, including some place to enhance scouring of the bank to recruit future spawning gravel. We already observed the creation of pool for fish to utilize. Given the large size and long length of these logs, the number that are pinned to live trees, as you see here on the bank, are wedged between large boulders and interlocked between themselves, such as, again, as you see here, combined with the modest flow of Cedar Creek, these havens for fish should last for many decades. Over time, trees that are currently growing in the adjacent area next to the creek will succumb to age, disease, landslides, or wind, and will naturally fall into the creek to replace what we have put here today. Thank you.